Uh, in this module we have already seen uh, the uh, principle behind molecular beam epitaxy and um, pulse laser deposition and pulse electron deposition. And uh, in today's lecture I am going to specifically deal with the uh, issues concerning uh, sputtering technique which is by and large a very useful material <coughs> synthetic tool. Uh, variety of compounds have been fabricated using this sputtering technique. Therefore, we are going to look a uh, little bit into the principle behind it because this is one of the fairly well known and used by almost all the research groups across the world, but yet this has its own novel features. So, in today's lecture we will single out uh, some of the aspects that uh, under play the importance of uh, uh, sputtering and also look at few examples. As you would see from the animation that the process can be as simple as one atom knocking the other atom and in the process you can selectively deposit an atom which is on the on the upper side. So, we will look into the details of this uh, shortly. What is exactly the fu fundamental issue regarding sputter deposition. Um, if you take any atom uh, largely they are and uh, does not have any charge whereas, if you keep this uh, under an electron cloud or in the influence of a, a very high electric field then uh, this neutral atom actually gets ionized which we can see here it gets ionized into the uh, energetic par uh, particles. Uh, which actually loses either an electron or takes an electron and therefore, this atom will have a net electric charge and uh, this ionized atom can actually be selectively placed on a particular um, substrate which happens to be an electrode. So, this is fairly a simple process of ionizing one atom and using that atom to go and hit against another target material and as a result we can get the necessary uh, process uh, carried out. So, if you look at this uh, uh, simple uh, cartoon of the sputter deposition uh, what we see here under influence of a high voltage uh, any, ad any atom which is ionized into a ion actually will form a plasma between two electrodes. One electrode can be one of the material which is the target material and the other electrode can be the substrate. So, you have a target and the substrate and in between you create a plasma and this is what we call as a plasma cloud and this plasma cloud is composed of both positive ions as well as negative ions and how this will happen when you create a plasma you need two things one is a low pressure gas and a high energy field. So, this combination of a low pressure gas and a high energy field will result in a plasma which is composed of electrons as well as um, positive ions. So, if we have uh, suppose this upper electrode as the target material and if it is biased such a way this acts like a cathode. Now, what will happen all these positive ions what we have generated here in the plasma this will go towards the cathode and this will get bombarded or it will collide ok. A fast collision will be there and this depends on the ion energy that you generate. So, higher the field then you increase the ion energy. So, they will go at a rapid rate and knock out all this <coughs> target atoms from the target and this target atoms actually can be deposited on a wafer which is your substrate. So, this is the mechanism where ion from the plasma are attracted towards a target made of the material to be deposited and the ions strike the target physically knocking target atoms loose and the target then lands on the desired substrate. So, this is a simple process. Now, in this whatever is happening is mainly governed by 
two parameters one is the voltage that you apply and the gas that you use or the uh, pressure of the gas that you employ. So, in most cases it is argon gas which is used as a sputtering ion because at low pressure and at very high electric field they easily ionize into argon plus and uh, then they get uh, they, they get generated as air plus and then they can go and strike on the source then the ablated material actually goes and falls on the substrate here. So, uh, this is a very catchy parameter where you play around with 1 millitor to 100 millitor of argon gas pressure and the workable range is 2 to 5 kV we will come to this shortly from now. So, when atoms go into a gas state what all uh, is important number 1 at the target target atoms are ejected and the target ions are ejected to the extent of 1 to 2 percent which means it is not a bulk phenomena what is happening you are only uh, uh, ejecting out the surface uh, uh, ions or atoms and electrons are actually emitted during the process which helps the plasma going. So, the you have a sustained plasma as long as you want and when the electric field is on this plasma will be sustained because electrons are also emitted and this will go to the uh, anode. And uh, another thing that happens here is argon ions they give back uh, the energy and they will come back as neutral argon. Therefore, argon is also confined within the system and sometimes depending on the ion, uh, ion energy argon can also be buried which is nothing but you are implanting a ion into the uh, depositing film and photons are also produced during this process. Now, in this sputtering process what is the um, parameters that we need to have in mind and what is this uh, in effect uh, tries to convey to us. First of all it is a momentum transfer process it is not a chemical reaction one ion with a lot of kinetic energy coming and impinging on the surface of another target ion and those atoms are actually removed uh, forcibly by the uh, uh, argon ions. As a result top 10 angstrom of the atomic layer is actually replaced by argon atoms. So, it is mostly a hard sphere collision model and that is what we saw in the first cartoon also. Uh, it is merely a collision process and the energies involved are uh, less than 50 keV and 95 percent of the incident energy goes into the target where 5 percent of the incident energy is carried off by the target atoms. And uh, another thing here is that it is a non-uniform distribution because it randomly goes the way you position your target the way you position your uh, uh, your argon source and uh, the uh, the argon pressure and the electric field that you apply everything uh, brings about a non-uniform distribution therefore, it takes a skill to optimize on the growth process. And uh, usually when we think of sputtering we talk about sputter yield which is called as S. So, and this S is nothing but the number of atoms ejected over the number of atoms incident. And uh, if you want to maximize on this then you need to vary some of the parameters. Therefore, whenever we talk about uh, sputtering usually we think uh, we refer to as sputter yield. So, sputter yield actually depends on a few parameters target material uh, sputtering gas and uh, geometry in which it is aligned. These three cartoons will tell us what exactly this means. In this cartoon the sputter yield is actually plotted against uh, the glancing angle of incidence. So, your argon is actually uh, oriented to the uh, target and how it is positioned the glancing angle will tell you what sort of sputtering yield you will achieve 
as you see here it keeps on going up to 60 degree C uh, 60 degrees of glancing angle but what is optimized is that when you have a geometry of 20 to 30 degrees glancing then you get maximum uh, sputtering yield. So, this is one parameter that we need to bear in mind and also if you make a plot of sputtering yield versus um, incident ion energy you would see that there is a threshold which is minimum uh, beyond which you can actually uh, knock out the atoms and uh, that is of the order of 100 volts uh, nearly 100 volts. So, minimum uh, threshold energy is needed for the ions to come out of the uh, target and uh, this is a plot for uh, uh, silver and for titanium where you can clearly see that it is workable around this region. So, 2 to 5 kilo volt is the operational voltage that is needed and also if you look at the uh, deposition rate versus uh, argon pressure you can clearly see that it is at the maximum around 100 milli torr. So, irrespective of the chamber size these are some of the governing principles which has been standardized over many experiments. So, apart from uh, those three important uh, uh, parameters sputter voltage and bias voltage is also important because if you want the argon ions to travel towards the uh, target material then you need to have the bias voltage also regularized. So, only then you can actually uh, draw the argon atoms towards the uh, cathode. So, bias voltage is important where you keep the target material negatively biased so that the positive organs can come and hit the target. And uh, another uh, thing that uh, is important especially when we think about making a film uh, using sputtering is the substrate temperature. Uh, most of the compounds require some slight heating therefore, the substrate temperature is very important. Uh, and as you would see in the following examples silicon technology is mostly a sputtering technology and therefore, in silicon technology we use mostly room temperature, but when we lo look for oxides and other uh, refractory materials uh, if you want a crystalline uh, film you need to regulate on the substrate temperature. Then the deposition rate is also important which changes with argon pressure and this increases um, with the sputter yield and again the particle energy um, which is dependent both on the sputter voltage, substrate bias and argon pressure all these are important uh, parameters. Uh, in uh, sputtering uh, as I mentioned to you that uh, this E threshold uh, is the energy which is minimum to knock out the uh, ions or atoms from the target as you would see here you, you can achieve this at very uh, at relatively great ease for silicon and uh, even for tungsten and other um, metals whereas heavier metals like uh, platinum gold uh, you know require they give a very good uh, yield uh, with very high ion energy and uh, this is one of the reason in uh, most of our experiments where we would like to do characterization um, using uh, gold coated samples. This is the philosophy behind that that easily we can get uh, a larger sputter yield at relatively lower ion energy. Therefore, in most of the samples where we study uh, scanning electron microscopic images for uh, non-conducting samples, biological samples, polymeric samples usually we do a uh, gold coating um, compared to any other metal. Although other metals are relatively very uh, cheap uh, the sputter yield at a relatively uh, faster rate is determined uh, only for uh, gold and this E threshold is actually related to heat of vaporization and uh, to the gamma factor. So, depending on this we can try to calculate the energy threshold for uh, many metals. When we look at the uh, sputtering uh, phenomena 
as a whole uh, it is actually a glow discharge which is happening. This glow discharge can either bring about a sputtering process or it can bring about a plasma which can actually bring about several other reactions. So, we will uh, dwell little bit into what this glow discharge is. The glow dis discharge sputtering means energetic particles used to strike target and it is generated by glow discharge uh, which has to be created and this discharge need not necessarily be ionic, it can be neutral or no charged particles can also be produced between the cathode and the anode. If that is the case, if it is not a charged particle then there would not be any inelastic collision, it will be elastic collision where no energy exchange is taking place. But if it is a inelastic collision then energy is not very high then it will only excite electrons and emit photons nothing will come out. But if energy is high enough then it will ionize electrons and cause secondary free electrons to come. So, in such a um, situation you can actually look for two different type of processes uh, to happen. One is uh, sputtering uh, process uh, if we have a very high energy then we will be able to ionize or it could be simply a plasma process and therefore, there are two sets of uh, processes which are possible using a glow discharge process and uh, based on this principle several other techniques have been developed. If you are talking now about sputtering then we can talk about reactive sputtering, magneton sputtering, ion beam sputtering, reactive ion plating, cluster beam deposition. So many um, approaches are developed based on the simple philosophy of uh, sputtering, but if it is only the interaction of your material with the plasma then we have plasma oxidation, then anodization, polymerization, nitridation and uh, cathodic art deposition all these are possible using the plasma process. So, we will look at some of the examples we may not be able to go one by one, but specifically uh, bring out some differences between each of these techniques. So, that we can understand how different materials can be deposited using uh, different uh, approaches. Now, uh, in the sputtering mechanism actually few things can happen uh, based on the kinetic energy of the impinging particles which largely will dictate whether the sputtering is going to be uh, fruitful and whether the sputter yield will be at its maximum. One is bounce back when the energy is very low then the collision will be head on and it will not really knock out the electron from the target. Number two if the energy is very high then the uh, argon ions can actually impinge into the target material and as a result they can get embedded in the target which is the basis of ion implantation. In fact, ion implantation itself is a big technique. We can modify the surfaces, we can do many chemical reactions on surfaces by mere ion implantation technique which is a big research field in itself and uh, this is achieved only when the energy is greater than 10 keV. Uh, some uh, if the energy level is actually between two extremes it is neither low energy nor higher then two things can happen one is some fraction of the impinging ions is actually transferred to the solid in the form of heat another fraction of such energy causes atoms from the surface to be dislodged and ejected into the gas phase which is nothing but sputtering. So, uh, we are actually talking about sputtering in the regime uh, where the energy kinetic energy of the particles uh, or the impinging particles are uh, neither low nor very high and this is the situation um, what is actually mentioned in this uh, interesting cartoon where you if you have a head on collision then uh, necessarily does not knock out if it is having higher energy then it is, it is getting actually buried. So, several processes can happen and uh, the unique characteristics of this sputtering process is that you get a uniform thickness over large area 
and uh, this is one uh, technique which will stand out uh, compared to all the other sophisticated techniques that we have seen in terms of uh, thin film deposition namely MBE, uh, PLD and PED. Although those are extremely sensitive to the um, system that we are trying to uh, deposit or the materials we try to ablate, uh, the main feature of sputtering is that you can go for a very large area, I will show you some cartoons on that simple thickness control there is no problem then alloy compositions can easily be uh, made into thin films because you essentially retain the same composition deposition rates can be tailored sputtering cleaning uh, has to be done before we initiate a film deposition this is one intricate issue compared to MBE sputtering can actually bring a big mass of uh, material uh, as a plasma as a result uh, before and after each cycle of deposition a thorough cleaning is needed for sputtering that makes this method a very involved one. And uh, if you look at the target what we have and how much we can uh, sustain this target for uh, deposition you can at least run uh, up to 100 cycles of uh, or 100 runs you can easily do with this uh, uh, sputtering instrument. Uh, the materials which are actually coated by sputtering is an endless list as you would see here almost the whole spectrum of compounds can be made starting from metals any metals and the combination of metals as alloys or even non metals graphites, molybdenum sulphide, PTFE can be made or refractory oxides like alumina, chromia. Uh, and uh, other mixed, uh, mixed oxides, composites can be made, carbides can be made, nitrates can be made. In all these cases, all you need to do is make a combination of argon with another uh, gas which will actually ensure the carbon formation or nitrogen formation. In the case of oxides, we need to uh, flush little bit of oxygen along with argon, then you get oxide. And then of course, the most uh, rugged ones like borides and silicides can be made using sputtering. So, as you see from this list, it is convincing to know that you, it is independent of the nature of the target material whether it is metallic or refractory, anything can be coated which is actually a limitation in the case of MBE, PED or PLD. <coughs> this is a cartoon which tells you the nature of deposition or the magnitude of the deposition. This is a PVD sputtering tool and as you would see here all these are big wafers and together in one single run you can make such big wafers uh, coated. Therefore, you are talking about a scale up process which is much much simpler compared to the other high vacuum techniques and this is one of the uh, thin film sputtering lines not just this we can even make a series of this into 6, 7 lines. So, scale up and transforming this into an industrial process is very very easy and in fact the silicon technology either you talk about uh, solar cells or you talk about uh, uh, computer devices the most uh, adaptable uh, technique as of now in the industry is this sputtering technique because you can make large wafer. Uh, depositions. <clears throat> now, I want to bring some uh, contrast between different sputtering techniques that I had mentioned. One is the DC sputtering. In DC sputtering as I told you here the cathode has to be a metallic compound DC sputtering. So, therefore, target cannot be anything other than a metal. So, this is one of the binding principle of a DC sputtering. So, once the target is actually knocked out then it goes to the anode and uh, in the anode all the uh, positive ions go and get deposited. When we look at RF sputter, sputter deposition uh, there is a difference between DC and the RF because in RF you do not necessarily need to have um, a material which is metallic. In that case what you do? To sputter dielectric materials we can actually use a RF source 
we do not need to worry about it because the limitation for DC sputtering is it has to be metallic whereas for dielectric materials you use a RF generator which is actually um, grounded to your uh, anode as a result you can deposit any sort of material using uh, this sputtering uh, technique. So, uh, this is the main difference between the DC sputtering and RF sputtering. So, the, the issue is uh, uh, emphasized here uh, you do not have to worry about uh, the target being metallic you can um, do it through a RF generator. Now, we can also improvise on the deposition by using magnetron uh, sputter deposition. Um, this is actually employed along with either DC or uh, RF because magnetron sputtering is very well known and it is established. Now, what is the goal? It is to increase ionization of organ because in a very high field there could be saturation where after a certain time there would not be any deposition that is possible. Uh, so, we can actually use a magnet magnetic field to influence it. So, this is what is shown here when there is a strong electric field then this magnetic field can actually influence the trajectory of your organ ions. So, why do we do that higher sputter rates at lower organ pressures can be achieved even down to 0.5 millitor and uh, how it happens the increase possibility of electrons striking organ as a result there is a increase electron path length and uh, this we can achieve using electric and magnetic fields. So, in magnetron sp sputtering um, what you try to do is uh, behind the target we try to place this uh, magnetic field and as a result what would happen there is a magnetic field line which is generated here and this magnetic field line will confine the organ going only to a particular region. As a result the flow of the knocked out atoms will be synchronized and this can be enhanced by a simple modulation where you try to keep a magnet behind the target and that is the principle of magnetron sputtering and uh, there are several companies which actually sells such assembly uh, for magnetron sputtering and as you would see here this uh, cathode planar sputtering is also a form of magnetron sputtering uh, how big this deposition unit can be you can easily scale it up to a industry level and uh, this is another cartoon which tells us uh, why sputtering technique is still the most coveted as far as uh, industries are concerned. Uh, if you take a look at the dimension of uh, this substrate which, which this person is holding actually this is the big frame uh, which can be deposited um, either a glass uh, material or any, uh, any substrate can be housed as huge as that which is absolutely impossible using any other vacuum technique and uh, the dimension here is actually 600 mm by 1000 mm by 150 mm this is so uh, you can actually go for very large size depositions using sputtering techniques as you would see here uh, from this cartoon it is a very involved uh, assembly it is not simple but then the versatility of bringing large area depositions is huge and you would see here there are lot of mask here so you can mount your um, substrate and then push it selectively you can do patterning or deposition uh, at, uh, at your ease. So, there are other forms of uh, sputtering uh, other than DC magnetron sputtering this is called ion assisted deposition here with evaporation or sputtering um, we can actually bombard surface with ions. So, uh, we can parallelly there are two things happening here ions actually argon ions knock out the material along with that you can pump in some other ions not necessarily the same type and therefore, you can try to see the influence of this ion assisted deposition. Uh, in some cases it is also called soft landing techniques where you can try to modulate the growth process 
because sometimes the roughness that it brings will be very high. So, to improve on the smoothness of the film you can actually bring out a ion assisted deposition mainly to uh, improve on the smoothness of the film and to avoid the columnar growth of the growing film. So, uh, this is another approach that has been uh, introduced which is called as ion assisted and then there is another um, sputtering technique called reactive sputter deposition where a reactive gas to chamber during deposition is actually brought in that is oxygen or nitrogen as I told you if we are aiming at a oxide then you bring in oxygen along with argon or nitrogen along with argon for making nitrates. So, by this way uh, we can uh, we can try to achieve a wide spectrum of compounds. One of the uh, issue that uh, that we need to address as far as uh, sputtering uh, process is concerned is the evaporation step coverage. Uh, as you would see here the step coverage of evaporated film is poor due to directional nature of the evaporated material as you would see from this cartoon uh, either we can heat the substrate in order to bring about a uniform coverage or the most important thing that we need to uh, adopt here is rotating the substrate because as I told you the glancing angle of the uh, target to um, target to substrate is very important and uh, Therefore, if we rotate the target then the growth mode can be uh, increased. For example, if this is a step height the uh, and if it is focused only on a one direction then the deposition is only happening here and this place is left out and this thickness of the film may keep growing even without anything forming on this well. So, the best way to do that is to rotate and uh, heat the substrate so that you can get a uniform uh, step coverage and this is uh, what is uh, mentioned in the cartoon the time evolution of the evaporating coating um, and a uh, lot of other uh, modifications can also be brought in. Uh, therefore, this is one of the serious issue uh, as far as uh, sputtering uh, process is concerned. Uh, this is animation that will tell you the uh, versatile nature of uh, the sputtering process as you would see here just uh, by rotating or flipping the target you can actually make multi layers with these and uh, without breaking the vacuum you can see both the uh, green uh, ones and the uh, orange ones can be uh, deposited with these. So, uh, one of the main advantage of uh, this sputtering process is you can do a variety of uh, layer thickness and you can change the material uh, within the sample or within the chamber without breaking the vacuums. Therefore, uh, this is much more friendly than the other vacuum techniques that um, we have seen earlier. Uh, I will also show some examples of sputtered films and try to bring in some issues related to uh, the growth process of uh, different materials using the uh, sp sputtering process. This is an example of how gallium arsenide uh, actually is uh, deposited and in this case you can see the surface uh, which is seen in cartoon A uh, this is before sputtering. And, uh, if you look at the surface of uh, gallium arsenide you can see there is so much of uh, roughness here on the surface and this is up to 8 to 10 nanometer. So, if we are going to uh, put any film on this gallium arsenide then the growth mode is actually going to mimic the uh, uh, surface roughness of your substrate. So, it is a protocol that when you are going for any uh, sputtering process or any deposition for that matter the first protocol is to sputter and clean the film so that a flat surface is uh, generated and in this case you can see uh, this is the um, diffraction pattern of your gallium arsenide one 
0 0 surface actually showing the streaks of this diffraction spots after sputtering and if this um, surface is actually not sputtered then you would not get these streaks very sharp. In other words you cannot actually uh, monitor the growth process effectively. So, uh, even in MB or PLD which are very sophisticated techniques the first protocol that one would like to evolve with is to use a sputtering uh, mechanism by which in situ you first clean it in a very high vacuum environment. So, as you would see here after sputtering the same gallium arsenide film is showing a very flat terrace. So, to grow film on this surface is going to mean quite a lot on the growth process compared to this one. Therefore, um, sputtering uh, by itself is a unique technique, but then even in sophisticated uh, techniques like MBE or PLD the first protocol that one would adopt is to use um, a sputtering mechanism by which you can uh, redress this roughness before you start depositing any films. And uh, you can see uh, as another example large area silicon epitaxy using pulsed DC magnetron sputtering deposition and in this case uh, this is a homo epitaxy where silicon is actually deposited over silicon and uh, if you look carefully into this region this is where the interface is and you would not really make a clear distinction between the single crystalline silicon versus the silicon that is deposited mainly because it is um, homo epitaxy number one. Also this highlights how DC magnetron sputtering can be very important and if we actually blow up this range you would see here that there is a very excellent uh, epitaxial growth of the coated silicon over the substrate silicon. So, this is a very convincing proof that um, silicon, uh, silicon can be deposited at ease and uh, single crystalline uh, silicon um, can also be deposited and to substantiate the case we can actually take a reference silicon and do the Raman spectra and as you clearly see both the Raman spectra of the substrate silicon as well as the top silicon layer they show exactly the same Raman spectra showing that you can even get epitaxial growth without any problem. Yeah, as another example let us take the case of uh, uh, the X-space study of sputter deposited aluminum uh, thin films on graphite. As you would see uh, from this cartoon that we do not use sputtering just for removal of any atoms uh, just for film deposition, but it is also possible for us to evaluate or to quantify how much of the layer thickness that we can grow. So, uh, XPS we can do a quantitative uh, analysis to find out whether the sputtered def deposited film is of the required thickness. So, this is a in situ uh, reaction between the film process as well as XPS and uh, this is the survey spectrum of SPS that we see uh, where the reflections due to oxygen, uh, argon and aluminum is seen here and as you see that aluminum is uh, coated substantially at the same time we also see the uh, nature of this film growth where definitely there is some signature of argon that is present. So, if we want to remove argon from the embedded uh, uh, films in which argon atoms are embedded then it is possible for us to heat the graphite little bit so that this argon can actually come out. So, uh, there are several hybrid approaches where we can try to monitor the growth process of uh, these sputtered films and this is one of the very useful technique that is XPS to map whether you have got the required amount of uh, the material that is deposited. And um, as you would see here in spite of that there is still some trace of oxygen that is left which gives a clue that uh, when you are trying to deposit aluminum film there will always be some amount of residual oxygen that will be stuck to the film.
So, this is one way to quantify the purity of the film and uh, here again uh, there is another uh, example of how XPS studies can be used for calcium uh, nickel alloy. This is a CaNi5 alloy and um, this alloy before sputtering actually gives a very uh, different feature as you would see here. This is the peak corresponding to calcium 2 plus whereas this is the peak corresponding to calcium oxide and with the sputtering time over 0 to 65 minutes you can see the shape of this curve changing and if you map the calcium 2 plus um, peak it is actually fading completely with more and more time of sputtering. What it means that uh, in this calcium nickel alloy there is a definite composition of calcium hydroxide that is sticking calcium carbonate is there and also calcium oxide is there and uh, you would also find out that uh, above 1 hour of uh, over 1 hour of sputtering you can almost uh, remove all the hydroxide and carbonates and uh, this is one of the issue that would confront any of our study uh, or growth process because any metal or alloy will have a substantial amount of carbonates or hydroxides sticking to it. So, if you want to grow any particular film over, um, over a substrate it is always better as a protocol to use sputtering so that you can get this. Now, sputtering also will bring about roughness like this because you are knocking out at least uh, 9 to 10 nanometers of um, the uh, film thickness or the or the surface with the argon ions. Therefore, uh, when we try to sputter with argon ions it should always be followed by a annealing process. So, when you do the annealing process what what will happen this will actually become a very flat terrace. So, sputtering alone is not the issue when you want to make a very nice uh, surface um, you should always go for organ sputtering followed by a sustained annealing process. So, this uh, cartoon clearly gives a clue to how the hydroxides and carbonates can uh, contaminate the surface of any alloy surface. Uh, this is another example which has been quoted in JPC uh, by this group where they have tried to map uh, the sputtering process for SIMS. This is secondary ion mass spectroscopy and uh, this is a very nice uh, article where polystyrene is actually deposited on uh, silver 111 and if you want to quantify this result uh, using SIMS which will give you precisely the nature of uh, or uh, the constituents of this uh, um, polymers which are there and especially if you want to know what set of polymeric units are coming secondary ion mass spectroscopy is a very good tool and uh, if we try to do the sputtering here then you would find out that selectively this polymeric units will be coming out it may be dimer it may be trimer it may be tetramer. So, SIMS is a very good tool to study the nature of occlusion and this has been actually published in accounts of chemical research. Unfortunately, I am not able to show you the animation for this, but what is actually told is that these are actually coming out as tetramers in the uh, mass spectroscopy. So, when there is sputtering happening they do not come out as individual molecules, but they actually come out as tetramers. So, uh, simple sputtering, but then uh, this uh, the notion of sputtering is actually used in a characterization tool where it is not actually forming any film, but it can become a very useful tool to analyze uh, the selectively how adhesion is happening between a inorganic and polymer interface. So, this is a very good example where sputtering has proved to be a useful tool to analyze the mechanism of adhesion and this is a cartoon that will tell you how we can map this. Uh, what you see in this cartoon is a multi layer with the 
uh, different scales of atomic layers and as you see here when your argon ion is actually used to sputter the surface first this uh, top layer is getting etched or removed and in that case you see both the layers actually coming out. Now once the sputtering goes to the second layer you can see the first layer is actually coming down and the second layer is picking up. You would see as the gray scale uh, top layer is vanishing and once the argon starts hitting the second layer uh, the progression of this uh, graph would change. Yeah, you can see that now the top layer is actually coming down in intensity whereas the second layer is actually growing in intensity. It is actually plotted in 0 1 scale. So, that gives a measure of the thickness of your first layer how much is there and then you can keep going further because your second layer is going to deplete and the third layer is going to come. So, this second layer which is actually uh, showing maxima is now going to decrease as you see here it is decreasing and the third layer is actually picking up. So, this is a depth profile that we can use sputtering to evaluate the thickness of your multi layer and also it will tell if it is a inhomogeneous growth then there will be a mixture of two things happening. So, the profile will tell us uh, whether it is a very sharp interface or not the way it is going. Now, the red layer is coming out then you can see that that is picking up. So, this is the principle by which uh, SIMS is used secondary emission ion mass spectroscopy um, is actually a very nice tool where actually sputtering is the underlying principle that is used for evaluating the uh, composition of different metal ions present in your sample. Uh, there are other useful examples where sputtering is not merely a assisting tool, but it is also a very good processing tool here in this case very nice interface between uh, silicon and uh, uh, zinc oxide is shown here. This is the interface and as you would see the, there is some problem between the silicon and the interface and this is mainly coming due to silica okay, that amorphous silica is there. Nevertheless, once the zinc oxide starts growing over uh, the thickness range you can see how uh, oriented zinc oxide uh, planes are placed. So, uh, you can get a textured growth along this 0001 orientation no secondary inclusions are there only hexagonal zinc oxide phase with the very low uh, defect intensity uh, density is there. So, uh, sputtering can be used for oriented films and this is again uh, another example where you can uh, you can try to deposit uh, zinc oxide with these uh, even in a different contour of your um, substrate. Uh, so, uh, you can see in this depth also the TEM is given. So, you can very clearly grow a uniform uh, zinc oxide film and here is one cartoon just to give a comparison between uh, where sputter film stands in comparison with other sophisticated techniques. For example, the most competing one along with the sputtering is PLD because PLD can also uh, be used for variety of materials and uh, a comparison between uh, the PLD uh, deposited and the sputtered film does give an impression that almost same uh, roughness is there and you can grow a very good film. But nevertheless uh, it is interesting to see from the transmittance for this uh, particular uh, germanium um, selenide film that the transmittance is much better in the case of sputtered film because you get a transmittance of 80 and it is really showing a very steep fall compared to PLD. What it means is although PLD shows the roughness to be minimum, but then the transmittance is a good measure of the quality of the film and also the 
germanium and selenium ratio and looks to be that the sputtered film has a much better chemical homogeneity as far as uh, uh, this particular system is concerned. And again uh, the Raman spectra for the same germanium selenide uh, which is uh, compared uh, the sputtered films shows the Raman signal which is much more closer to the bulk compared to PLD. So, uh, in terms of uh, the efficiency um, sputtering uh, sputtered film seems to be of a comparable quality compared to uh, PLD. So, just want to make one last conclusion or uh, comparison between evaporation techniques and sputtering. Uh, we have seen one example of PLD uh, something similar uh, in nature uh, to sputtered film is the evaporation technique where you take any metal to near to its melting point because of the vapor pressure those are actually driven to the substrate and they form a film. So, in evaporation technique also you can either get a nucleated growth or a two dimensional growth depending on the material, but one would see that uh, compared to evaporation sputtering has its own advantage. Wha what are they? In evaporation they, these are actually the ions that are coming are of low energy therefore, it is a milder technique whereas, uh, in sputtering the atoms that are coming out of the target are of higher energy and even vacuum path you can see very few collisions and uh, line of sight deposition is there, but sputtering is a many collision process. So, it is a momentous uh, growth process and uh, look at the texture of the film uh, this is of larger grain size smaller grain size therefore, the surface roughness will be much more lesser in sputtering compared to evaporation um, and you get a very better adhesion compared to uh, evaporation technique. So, in many ways sputtering technique has its own advantage and uh, the ease with which we can sputter brings about uh, extremely uh, new uh, new and costly improvisation where we can actually go for uh, a combined technique where sputtering can be the basic tool, but we can achieve several multi layer structures also using sputtering without much uh, <coughs> intricate instrumentation. So, we have seen on the whole starting from a high vacuum technique that is MBE where we work at very high vacuum deposition to one of the lowest uh, vacuum uh, uh, rated deposition tool that is sputtering. In sputtering usually we play around at millitor whereas, in MBE we are working at a very high base pressure. So, between these two extremes we have seen several issues that confront the film growth or material processing and uh, one can use this to the maximum advantage especially sputtering technique mainly because of its versatility where we can go for a very large area deposition. So, with this we can stop. <laughs>